Hey friends. So it's been a while since we've had a chat and I've got something on my mind. I thought you guys might have on your minds too. And so I thought we should chat about this. So as you can see, I have this bed behind me. This is like an eight or 10 foot bed. I don't remember right now. Um, oh well. <sighs> the point is, is that this bed and that bed and that bed and that bed <laughs> and even the bed that's way over there they are stuffed full of grains now that's not a problem hear me out the problem is i am not a leftover girl i have good reasons for not being a leftover girl we ate basically the same meals repeatedly every single day of my childhood like hash Ugh. the words the word hash still makes me cringe i can't i can't even do it guys and it's not even that bad our version of hash was just fried potatoes like little cubed up fried potatoes meat with like a gravy thing well that was pretty pretty much it that was that was what hash was but anyway i just can't even i can't even do it we ate spaghetti and tacos and like, I mean, I love a taco, but there's so many more versions than the, the one kind of taco we had. So we ate based on price. We ate based on availability. We ate, um, really simply my mom worked. And so we ate something simple. So anyway, I just can't do repeated meals. And that even goes for eating salad by itself as a meal for every lunch and dinner for months on end because that's what North Idaho grows really well in the spring from about, well, April, May, and June for sure. We have this lull until everything goes crazy in July and then we have like all the stuff for July and August and September pretty much. Like there's a lot of more variety. So let's just say I am, I have for a really long time, like probably 11 or 12 years at least, maybe even more than that. I have purposed to eat with the seasons, to make one strong decision every so often and stick with it of eating with the seasons and buying what's in season and utilizing it. But I'm feeling that draw and that pull like even more right now. Like if if we have it growing in our gardens, like we should be eating this. Oh my goodness. That's not nice. Kitties. Finn and Pete don't like each other. They do this like 10 times a day. It's not very nice. Anyway. So I want, I, I don't want to live in survival. I don't know about you guys. Like there's so much talk right now about surviving and prepping and the end of the world and you know, all the things like, don't be, don't get me wrong. I do love a good conspiracy theory. I have my own opinions. I'm not going to share them with you right now. Uh, but I don't want to live on beans and rice. Like we don't even hardly eat beans and rice. That's, we don't eat that. We eat potatoes, um, a lot. Don't, don't even, I know what you're thinking. You eat potatoes because you grow in, you're in Idaho. That's not true, <laughs> but they do grow good here. They do it. That's true. So anyway, to me, that's one of the reasons and, and the draws for growing so many herbs is that I like flavor. I want my food to taste good. I want variety. I want, um, availability, all the things. So how do you use greens? and like stir fry greens and salad greens in different ways and not like go to the store for your main part of your meal. Now we do raise and hunt for almost all of our meat at this point. I mean, honestly, it could be a hundred percent. We do like to support a local business um, for like bringing in chickens. I just haven't, I've chosen to go the easy route rather than raising it ourselves. As long as that is an option, I will probably continue because I can't really do it that cheap and I don't really want to butcher a whole bunch of meat birds because they stink so bad. So anyway, um, yeah. So 
I don't want to go on a tangent here. I want to stay focused. So my goal, my goal is to grow what we eat and eat what we grow. You don't have this big of a garden and then not utilize what you have. And I'm pretty good at only planting like, mo like I'm, I'm good at succession sowing and planting things that I know our family enjoys. And I'm also good at planting a few extras to test our taste buds and, and train our taste buds to like different things. So anyway, uh, and this year I really honed in even more. Like we have a lot of these beds are filled with beets because you can use beets for greens and for the actual beet. And then also we have a ton of beans and peas and things I'm going to be canning and all of that. But it just got me to thinking like, what do you guys do? So if you have big gardens, um, I would really love like a list in the comments of the things that you guys actually grow, like your favorite recipes, different salads you guys make. Um, I know you can change out the dressings and all that, but you're still eating salad at the end of the day. Um, which is awesome. It's like, don't get me wrong here. I like eating salad. It's wonderful. And it's so fresh, especially when it's hot out, but like I need some more ideas guys. So please leave in the comments recipes that you have. Like if you have a stir fry, tell me different kinds of veggies that you like to put in the stir fry. I mean, let's be real. We go back to our standbys. So my standby for a stir fry is carrots, broccoli, maybe cabbage if I have it, celery. That's it. You know, maybe I might throw some peas in there every once in a while. So tonight I picked stir fry greens from the dragon stir fry mix. I picked some radishes and some salad turnips because I have them. Um, and I picked some bok choy leaves that I have. I don't have the actual full on bok choy, but some of them are gonna um, go to the seed anyway. So I figure I might as well just use the stem. So I don't have any broccoli yet. So we're nixing that. I do have carrots and celery left over in the fridge from the spring because it they last forever. So um, I still have those and I'm going to throw those in there, but I would really like to just start branching out and be able to, maybe, maybe I already have the veggies that I'm growing in my garden right now, but I just don't know to add them. So if you have ideas, I would absolutely love your thoughts, love your opinions. Um, and then also for salads, like throw down in the comments your absolute favorite salad dressing, homemade salad dressing recipe that is quick and easy because I want to change our habits. And if you're going to change a habit, it better be an easy change because otherwise it's not sustainable. So yes, my Pinterest boards are filled with a kajillion ideas. Today we picked like 15 pounds of strawberries. Tomorrow we're going to go pick a whole bunch more. Uh, and we are going to have a continual harvest off of our own farm. Normally the kids just eat those fresh or we use them for cooking. And that's probably my plan right now is just to buy in what we need to store in the freezer. So I'm just going to go get more because they're a good price and they're supporting a local farm. But I want to eat fresh what's in season for as many meals as possible. And then that's it. We don't get it anymore unless it's been preserved by us. So like strawberries was the very first thing that I made that decision. I would love for you guys to join me in this. I think it's really important. Join me in this challenge to eat from your gardens and um, cut out the grocery store this summer. See what you can do. If you've never planted a garden, I challenge you to plant. Like even if you don't have space or you've never gardened, get some pots going. Put them on your balcony if you need to, if you're in an apartment uh, or get a raised bed. Every single one of you viewers you can grow the world's best food for your family in your own backyard. Right now, I have the world's best food right here for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, growing right in my backyard. And I'm so excited. I love it. And the most amazing thing about growing your own is look at this abundance. Like, I have so much food. It's crazy. I have so much food that I just, I have to share with people because I can't even preserve this much food. We even make like, I dehydrate all the extra greens and I uh, use it for super green powder in the winter for smoothies because my kids don't love it or throw it in a soup at the last minute or anything like that. So we're getting extra greens all year long. Um, we eat salads, we eat soups, we, I mean, everything you can imagine, we're already like trying to do it. I just need some diversity in that. 
Um, and what we don't eat most of the time, we either share with our friends or we give to our animals. Like I just took, I'll show you, I'll show you the whole. I just took a whole row of turnips, the salad turnips. By the way, if you have the trick for salad turnips in my area, please let me know. Every single year I have planted them, they don't make the turnip. They, oh, they only make the greens and then the greens flower. So I just pulled out this huge row right here. Huge row, it's like four feet. But anyway, to me it's a huge row, it's a big space. I'm gonna plant something else there. And I fed all of that to my goats and my chickens and they're all super happy. Here's what I went with. This is Swiss chard, turnip, a different kind of turnip. This is radish, green onion, uh, baby bok choy. Well, actually this is regular bok choy, but uh, leaves, some mustard greens. They're just a little droopy because I just perked them up with some water. Uh, I have some flowering dragon stir fry mix here because the flowers are edible. And I've just, I'm gonna chop these up and make it look like this. So that's gonna go into our stir fry. And then I'll show you the rest. Oh, as well as this venison I have thawing right here. Dinner is almost ready. I did not realize when I started this that I was like out of, this is soy sauce. So my mom's gonna run and go get soy sauce. I realize that's not the most amazing thing you can use, but we're eating Chinese. So if you have Chinese, you gotta have soy sauce, right? And um, I did throw in some celery and some carrots into the stir fry that I didn't remember that I had in the um, fridge, but otherwise everything in here has come from our own farm. We used venison, a uh, steak cut up in here, and then um, I did go ahead and throw in some fried rice just because I had it made up, and the um, shrimp I had in the freezer, so I went ahead and did that too. Now, obviously we don't grow rice in North Idaho, at least it's not on our farm. <laughs> okay, I just have to tell you guys, I've made egg fried rice a lot of times. It's never just quite right, you know? Like it just tastes amazing when you go to a Chinese restaurant. And tonight, yes. For the first time, I actually, thank you to my sister Heather, nailed the, the uh, totally nailed fried rice. Yes, so excited. I also wanted to let you guys know, I'm gonna throw these greens in there. Uh, maybe not all of these, that's a lot, that's a lot of greens, and uh, the rest of these green onions as well. Um, and I wanted to encourage you guys, you don't have to make a meal that's totally from your farm. When you do that for the very first time, I remember I made rad rabbit stew from everything on our farm. We grew our potatoes, our carrots, the rabbit, um, and everything that we put into that, and it was the most satisfying meal I think I've ever had, at least up to, to that date. Um, because it's just so amazing when you can grow it on your own farm. But you don't have to start there. Start with replacing one ingredient that you use a lot. Or start with replacing one ingredient you don't use a lot. Just start somewhere small. Hey, thanks for chatting with me for a little bit. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I really love uh, reading your guys' comments and stuff. I'll see you guys again soon. Looks pretty good to me. I think I'm going to call it good.